I do want to talk to you tonight about uh, something that is very important to me. Because every election that results in the election of a new government represents a new direction and a new path for our province. I want to talk a little bit about the path that it is so clear we are now on. But I want to talk a lot more about the path that I believe we need to be on to ensure our future success. I believe strongly that the NDP are taking our province in the wrong direction. They have not exhibited the change that they promised in the last election campaign. In fact, they have broken already almost all of their major campaign promises. They have shown arrogance in the way that they have only reluctantly dealt with the MLA expense scandal. And they have been bullies to our small business communities, our small business owners, and anyone else that disagrees with their aims. Just as important as that, they have driven levels of public cynicism to record highs about politicians and our political system. And if you are a believer in our political system like I am, and I know you are because you're here tonight, then these things bother you and they bother me. And it is very clear as a result of all of those things that they are taking our province in the wrong direction. But there is a better way. I believe that Nova Scotia can be great again. And it is our job, together, yours and mine, to define that better way for Nova Scotia. First and foremost, for progressive conservatives, I believe very strongly we are a fiscally conservative, fiscally responsible conservative party. And if I have anything to say about it, we will put back on the books that balanced budget legislation that requires balanced budgets that the NDP repealed in their first budget. That is what a conservative government would do. And I think we should go further than that and ensure that in the future, government spending is limited to no more than the growth in our population plus inflation. <laughs> now let me tell you what I mean by that. When I left Premier Ham's office in 2004, the total provincial budget was $6 billion. Here we are six short years later, and the total provincial budget is $9 billion, a 50% increase. Now you can ask yourselves if you feel 50% better served by your government today <laughs> than you did six years ago. Let me give you another example. When I left Premier Ham's office in 2004, the provincial government had 9,000 employees. Now, in 2010, it has 11,000 employees, a 20% increase. Now, you can ask yourselves, do you feel 20% better served by your provincial government? At the very time when all businesses and many households were required to find ways to become more efficient, your government became less efficient. We should expect full accountability for every dollar of taxpayers' money that the government spends. You're going to hear a lot tomorrow and over the next few days about the Auditor General. I think we should embrace the work of the Auditor General, who covers all of the departments of government now. But we should extend his reach to all of the agencies, boards, and commissions of government. We should extend his reach to our universities, to our hospitals, to our schools, to the liquor stores, to ensure that every dollar of taxpayers' money 
is subject to audit on a timely basis. Just think. <laughs> Just think what that would do for the efficiency of government. And let's be clear about what our goal is. That would make Nova Scotia's government the most truly accountable in the country. And we should aim for nothing less. But why stop at the dollars? Why don't we take every dollar the government spends, every single one, and put it online for all to see? Shine the light of day on that spending. The government keeps all kinds of statistics about the quality of health care in our hospitals, about the quality of teaching in our schools, even about the crime rates in our neighborhoods. All of that should be published and online for any Nova Scotian who wants to see it. But being a conservative is about more than balancing the budget. We need to apply the same drive and determination and energy to our environment as we do to our budget. Why would we accept an environmental deficit but not a financial one? After all, what is a deficit anyway, other than taking out more of something than you put back in? It is a mystery to me why the Conservative Party is not seen as the most responsible party when it comes to the environment. It is so core to conservative thought that I cannot understand why we are not seen that way. I want you to imagine if we were able to take the hydropower of Newfoundland and the tidal and wind power of Nova Scotia and the nuclear power and transmission access of New Brunswick and they all work together, we would be a green power powerhouse in North America. We could have cheaper, greener, sustainable energy at prices that attract industry that are a benefit to you and your homes and to your businesses as well. That is the opportunity for us on the environment. And the only thing that stands in our way is the squabbling that goes on between our little regional governments. And if I have anything to say about it, we will bring the premiers of those four provinces together and we will make it work for the benefit of the entire Atlantic region, which we care so much about along with our own province. John Kenneth Galbraith once said that most economists believe that the answer to economic underdevelopment is massive infusions of capital. But he says they are wrong. The answer to economic underdevelopment is massive infusions of education. And I cannot think of a more conservative principle than that. We need to ensure that there is accountability in the education system for the billion dollars plus a year that we give them. For example, I think we have been too focused on the quality of the buildings themselves and not enough on the quality of the learning experience that goes on inside. Let's ensure that we have rigorous standards and regular testing of what is going on in our classrooms Let's make sure report cards are meaningful to the parents that they go home to. Let's make sure class sizes are reasonable enough to allow teachers to do their jobs. Let's do everything we possibly can to give our young people every chance of reaching as high as their ability can reach, starting with a good education. That is what a modern, progressive, conservative government would do.